Hello and welcome back to yet another sketchbook video. This time we're on my most recent sketchbook. At this point we'll hopefully see some more refined sketches, some slightly better details on characters and the figure. So let's get started. First thing to say is this was actually a gift from Rusty and her mum. I don't know if anyone recalls me mentioning in one of the previous videos about how I'd had some surgery at some point and I was bed bound for quite a while. A year later, so that was in 2017, a year later in 2018 it happened again. I had to have some more surgery for the same thing. Thankfully I'm all better now, it's all, it's all been sorted. And this was like a get well present from Rusty and her mum. And then there's just a nice little message just saying get well soon and enjoy creating art in the new sketchbook. Art I did create. <laughs> At this point I started putting my name and then my alias and then some contact details on there and then just kind of inviting people to actually go through and check my, my artwork. So here we have a full body flux. Again, I think at this point, I was this is like really early on in this sketchbook, so we're still in 2018 at this point. And I was still struggling to like fit a character on the page using the whole like width of the page. Triple clef and then super s because hey, who doesn't like a throwback to the 90s? Just a picture of Rusty saying, I sell a tape by V to summer face. Gone viral, gone sexual. And then this was a drawing inspired from a still from my vacation 2018 video, my vlog that I did when I, when I was there. I filmed like the stuff I was doing as cameraman and like my time there enjoying the con. And on the last day of the convention, I got a nice shot of me, Rusty and Casper just chilling on the beach with our ice creams. And I really liked that, that shot. So I took a still image of it and referenced that into a drawing. And then I was attempting, because along with the sketchbook, uh, I also got gifted some Faber-Castell uh, colouring pencils by Rusty and her mum. And so I was trying to attempt to use that. I wasn't intending to make Flux blonde, but that's how he came out in this. At this point I wasn't really that versed in using colouring pencils in a sketchbook. I've never used colouring pencils since I was a child. And then just another attempt at full body flux. Trying to work with posture and stuff and getting a little bit better with the feet and stuff. The legs aren't quite as dummy thick as they have been. And then this was a sketch for a commission that my friend Alex Silverfang paid me to do. And then just a flux looking confused. Just a weird beady eyed dog character. I don't think that was drawn from a reference, I think that came from my own imagination and it's kind of weirdly creepy looking so let's just move on before it stares into our souls. This is me trying to practice drawing maned walls because it was a species I've never really drawn before. I was doing a raffle piece for a friend of mine who's also called Rusty of their maned wolf character because I'd never drawn one before. I decided to draw it in the sketchbook first just to kind of practice it a bit. I actually think it looks quite decent. My only critique is the legs are not long enough. I think this is a storyboard for a little sketch that me and Alex Silverfang did when he came down to visit us. I just want to look a quick little short video of um, Alex making a cup of tea because hey that's the British way, you got to drink tea and you got to show people how to do it properly. And then I think I was practicing, I think this is me trying to do like 60s inspired characters and so I was doing the, the sort of striped dress. I don't know if that actually looks 60s enough but that's what I found as a reference at the time, so I was playing around with the hair and the pose, going for like the, the sort of neat cut fringe again, kind of like in one of the other books. At this time I think it looks a lot better than my previous attempt for that hairstyle. This is me drawing my friend Rusty, the, the main wolf character. Again, I, I struggled to fit him on the page. And then we've got another action pose, and then I think these were rough drawings for... I was designing what's called a creative CV, so it's like a resume or a curriculum vitae and it's a one with like creative design elements so it tends to be ones that you make for going into applying for jobs in the creative industry. So I wanted to include some images on that page uh, to go with my work experience and work history stuff. And then I think this was for a commission. I think someone commissioned me to do like a basketball themed piece of their character and so again it was something I'd never really worked with before so I was just going online and just finding references of basketball players doing like dramatic poses and then I was just trying to capture those poses. I think at this point we're getting into preparations for Confuzzle 2019 which the theme was to do with like spies and stuff and so I was trying to come up with ideas for the art auction and so I wanted to do something based around the theme. Evil villains doing like evil looking characters that the typical like I've been expecting you were striking a, a cat. I kind of like the idea of a cat stroking another cat, but I think I also turned it upside down by 
turning the cat into a human. I didn't end up going with that one because it was fucking creepy, but hey, there you go. And I think here is just some spy torture scenarios. I did 24 for some reason because why not? And then I did uh, the, the spy character dangling in front of a shark tank. This did actually become a finished piece that I sold at the art auction during that year. So one idea I had was doing badges as like official like agency um, identification card. I never went ahead with that in the end because I think I, I saw other people doing it and I just thought well maybe that's not quite as original as I thought. And now I was thinking of doing like badges around that theme. But then I went off doing stuff catered towards the theme because I thought all oh, that will only last for that year. So I did like some weird like doodly doodly versions of these animals. These three actually did become actual badges and stickers that I sold. I did try and do a bird, but it didn't really work. I changed that out for a raccoon in the end. And then I was trying to do like cheapo commission ideas and one was like just these like head blob things. I mean, if any of these do interest you at all, let me know because I will offer these if there's enough interest, but I didn't think there would be and I ended up going with other ideas in the end instead. Playing around with that head idea and then I think I in the end settled on doing derpy badges, so just really like basic chibi stylized versions of people's characters on just a simple square sheet of paper put into a, a blank CD wallet and that became a thing that I still sell to this day every now and then. If you follow me on Twitter, keep an eye out because I will post more slots for those commissions. I think this was the idea that I was working with for the t-shirt that I designed. I was also practicing more around the confuzzled theme, so this time I was trying to do like a cat burglar, like a literal cat burglar, so like, I think it's like a jewel thief in like uh, a museum, you know, with all the lasers and stuff, I was trying to work on that idea, but I wanted to make it a little bit sexualized, so I put him in like a skin tight suit with a big bulge, again that's the same character, with a very clear bulge, I, I didn't like the pose on this one, but maybe this is something I can come back to if anyone's ever interested, but yeah, I was going with the jewel thief idea with the lasers, I think that idea can work, I just need to work on the pose a bit better, but Thankfully, through doing stuff in this book and doing stuff online, I've learned how to draw poses a bit better and make them a bit more dynamic and lively. And this was one of the dead badge ideas. And that did actually somewhat become my badge, although it's slightly different to this design, but very close. And then I drew Rusty's mom as like a outdoorsy person. And then this was another commission idea that I, do, I still want to work on, actually. I just never got around to actually doing a finished piece to show as an example. One thing I wanted to do was like um, old school board games, but with people's personas instead. I think at this point we were also in Wales. We were out in the mountains in Snowdon, and so I wanted to draw Flux sort of hiking up the mountains. Some more board game ideas, so we have battleships and Connect Four. I think the board game idea came from the fact that Connect Four memes were kind of surfacing at this point, and I found them absolutely hilarious, so I wanted to like do something to kind of go along those lines. And again, if this is something that would interest you, let me know because I'd be so down for doing these. I will post something about these at some point because I do think it's an idea that would work really well. Then I think I was trying to come up with some safer work YCH ideas based around RPG tropes. And so I was doing like a, a party of four, a party of five, all in the different roles, fighting some boss or something. And I think the Tour de France was coming in at this point, so I was quite excited for that because it's one of the few sports that I'm actually kind of into, although I haven't really kept up with it this year. And so I was just drawing a cyclist. And then I think this is Flux just in a bin with his tail sticking out. And then we have uh, another character in a jump strap. <laughs> And then this was an idea for a print that I ended up selling. I wanted to do something kind of a little bit suggestive, and so I drew a character in some tight underwear, uh, showing off his paws, and that did become a, a printed, digitally drawn piece. Just some rough poses, I think I was trying to draw Pine Martins. And then this was me trying to do a Bob Ross landscape, but instead of using paint, I was just using felt tip pens. And on this page, I think Casper drew these. I think these are just drawn with the same felt tip pens. It's just me, Rusty, Casper. And then I tried to draw Flux with the same felt tip pens. Didn't come out particularly the way I wanted it to. And then I think this is just like a weird fuzzy dragon character. And then this is around the time the Sonic movie. The first original trailer of the Sonic movie came out and the design was atrocious. I'm sure everyone could agree on that. And so I drew Flux in that style just for, for the meme. And then I actually drew the same screenshot, but with Sonic in the style 
which he should have been in. And then we have a returning character. We have Duke from the old House Draw manga book. That same character that popped up a lot in my old, really old sketchbook. He makes a return in this. I think I was just bored and I think I was reminiscing a little bit and I just wanted to try drawing him again. Years later, that's how I draw faces now. And then I think I was going through a RuPaul phase at this point, so I was just drawing some drag queens. And then you've got the fucking cot destroyers. And then there's just some weird stick figures for a pose I was trying to work on. I don't know what it was for. I think it might have been when I was at Confuzzle actually at my table. And I was just bored, trying to pass the time a little bit. So I was just drawing some ideas. This is one of those ideas. I think I was trying to work on the cat burglar idea again. And trying to draw some more like dramatic like spy poses. I went for a dog character instead of a cat on this one. And then this page is stuff for ScotiaCon. This is all draft ideas for the piece I did for the ScotiaCon art book. And so I was just working on ideas based on the theme. But it was all to do with steampunk and I'd never really drawn that much steampunk stuff before so I was kind of using a lot of resources just to kind of learn and I was using the mascot of ScotiaCon as like my subject matter for a character. And then these are drawn from Casper again. So we've got Note, Flux, and Fios, I think that is. Yes, Fios. I think this was drawn at a barbecue. We had like a little climbing meet with some friends and afterwards we went to a barbecue at Note's, Note and Fios's place. I think Casper took over my sketchbook and just drew these in there, which are really cute. We skip ahead quite a bit from 2019 to 2020. So start of the book was 2018 and somewhere in the middle we get into like 2019. So I had a bit of a break in between I guess. This was like late summer in 2020 I think. It's just like a big gap in the middle where I think I was focusing more on digital art and then I had a bit of an art block at the start of 2020 when the whole Covid thing kicked off and I just lost motivation and so it wasn't until like sort of middle of lockdown, I came back to my sketchbook and just went back to basics. Before this I was doing some classes on how to draw poses and do some gesture drawing stuff. Starting off in 2020 and we have just a cool fan art piece of Charizard. I think I drew this when I was at work, I was just on my lunch break. I wanted something to do to keep myself busy so I just found a picture of Charizard and just drew it and I was trying to really catch like the action and like the, the flowingness of, of the, the piece and really trying to like just put a bit of life into it and I think it came out really well. And this was around the time that Animal Crossing had come out on the Switch and so there was a big hoo-ha about that so I was trying to draw Flick and CJ and yeah, they're there together totally being like really gay and cute together because they are totally a couple at least in my mind. We've got a pin-up piece of Rusty, unfortunately. There's a piece on the other side that I drew in a felt-tip pen and it's kind of bled through to the other side, which is a shame. Sketchbooks are messy, that's, that's what happens. Then we've got another yoga pose, another yoga pose, and I think these are a massive, massive improvement from uh, my previous sketchbooks where I tried to do yoga poses. They just look so much more loose and lively. And then there's another underwear piece there. I think I was just more practicing the, the, the body rather than trying to be particularly sexual with this one. Um, and then this is a Jojo inspired pose because I think around this time I'd been getting into Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and I do think that all the poses in Jojo's Bizarre Adventure are really inspiring and really fun to draw and so I found a picture of like, this cars. I think I drew cars. I ignore his face, I'm not happy with how that looks but the pose, I'm really happy with how the pose looks. It's some coloured pieces of flux. I did like an action pose. This was drawn from a mannequin. I've got like a like a mannequin figure that you can kind of shape into things. I think I'd moved it and it accidentally ended up in like a really weird pose and I think Hazard was over at the time and commented on it saying that looks like some sort of stand, like stand user sort of pose from Jojo. So I drew Hazard in that pose. I tried to draw that same pose from the mannequin again. I think this one's a little better. And then just another action pose trying to get that, that flowingness of the line art, the line work, which I think came out really well. This page I, I like to call the climbing page because while I was sort of, sort of practicing gesture drawing, I actually took my sketchbook with me, my climbing sessions, and while I wasn't climbing, I was drawing other climbers on the walls and stuff. That was like a proper test of speed because like, Unlike gesture drawings where you have like a minute to draw a character or a model, I had like a few seconds to quickly get like a snapshot in my mind of, of the model and then try and draw what I could remember. So you got these really basic outlines here. And then you got some more refined ones where I've actually got online and found some references instead. I'm just so happy with how my posing has gone from being quite stiff and quite clunky to just this, this snap where everything's just kind of come into place and everything's kind of loosened up a little bit. So yeah, we've got more climbing here. And it's like a model catwalk pose. 
more yoga poses, another yoga pose that's that same pose from the other page. And then you've got Josuke from Judges Below Adventure Part 4. This is a reference piece. I was just trying to, again, experiment with bulky characters again, and so I drew this piece. Kind of faded off into the bottom. We're kind of going back to where I was struggling to fit characters into one page. I think I kind of cracked the code a little bit in that if the character's going to start fading off, I can just fade the lines off to imply that it goes elsewhere, but I don't necessarily have to show it. Some more climbing. I think this was when we were outdoors with Rusty and her mum. I took a picture of Rusty in her climbing gear, looking pretty cool. I liked the pose that she was in, so I tried to reference it. And then that was me trying to draw like a perspective piece. And then I did that same pose again. I think that one's an improvement, still not great, but hey, it was a good attempt. And then I saw a picture online of a character that I liked, so I, I referenced it. I was just practicing like a muscly dog character. I think this was drawn just off, off the top of my head. I was just doing it as like a warm up. And then I was also working with just drawing flux in different styles. I wasn't trying to like force a style, so unlike the other books where I was trying to change my style. This is just me trying to just experiment with different styles just to see if I could do it. So I did my usual style and then I did like a more kind of realistic cat style and then I did like a more kind of basic uh, cartoony flux instead. And then on this page, uh, I was practicing some lions. I was just drawing like some rough ideas just to kind of get the concept down. And then I was playing around with like the head shape and the proportions. And I actually made this drawing in a half tone brown paper um, sketchbook. Here we have some cats. I finished off the book with a lot of cats. We're coming quite close to the end. We've got the neighbors' cats that like to visit us sometimes. I wanted to kind of draw them in various different styles. So I drew, this is this, this is Tiger, this is Lily. I drew them in like a realistic style first. And then I tried to like, take influence from Disney and like a lot of sort of Western cartoons and so I drew Oliver from Oliver and Company and then I turned uh, Lily into like an Oliver style cat which I think came out really well and it's based on a picture that was taken of me holding her and then I drew Toulouse from Aristocats. I tried to draw Tiger in a similar style as Toulouse although I kind of went on sort of my own journey with, with Tiger. So I was also experimenting a bit more with colouring pencils trying to use like different colours for highlights and try to blend it a bit better and I think it came out really really well. And then there's a picture of Lily in a slightly different style from this one but it's, it's still Lily just in, a, in a cardboard box looking ridiculous. It was based on a picture that I'd taken of her and she just had this weird like crazed expression on her face and I just thought it was hilarious so I had to like I had to redraw that in some sort of way. I really like how these turn out. They almost came out like like an illustration in a kid's storybook or something and I think it looks really really cool and really fun. And then we finish off on a pretty cool note. So this is one of my most recent ones and I'm still really proud of this. So I was on a bit of a craze with um, wanting to draw a barbarian character. And so originally I started off with Flux carrying a torch and wearing like some fluffy leathery stuff, some hides. But then I wanted to like play around with the proportions a bit more so I, I just went online and found pictures of barbarians that like other people had drawn and tried to like reference the outfits and the styles and the, the poses and stuff but then I decided I didn't want it to be flux because I, I draw flux a lot he's a bit of a go-to of mine I wanted to kind of break away from that a little bit so I drew a Norwegian forest ca character instead so this was like a rough design of like his face and then this was the finished piece so essentially what I've done is just done like some draft thumbnail drawings, gone over this with a fine liner and which made it pop a little bit more to show that this is where my thought process has gone and this is where it's ended up. I think I pointed out that I've started dating some of my drawings at this point and that's something that I'll be doing from now on in a lot of sort of like my finished sketches in these books. So hopefully it'll be a bit better to keep track of like when I've done stuff and like where I was. And also I'm gonna start like getting into the habit of doing like an ending for my books as well. So I just wrote the end and just caught it in some felt tip pens and then just went, thanks for looking. Cause you know, I want to encourage people to pick this up and just have a look through, see what they see what they find, see what they think about art. And that brings me to the final book. So basically you're going from starting with drawings like this, going from like 2010, 2011, something like that. Going from that, to all of this and everything else you've seen in this book. I think it's a pretty cool thing to put into retrospect and it's a very cool example of how you can start off with something really crummy but if you keep going, keep pushing through it, you can then end up drawing stuff like this. 
and who knows where I'll end up in a year's time. I'm excited to see where things go from here and I've already started on a new sketchbook so I look forward to showing you that once I've finished it. I'm definitely going to make this a regular thing so stay tuned. Follow me on Twitter, I'll put a link to my Twitter on the screen or down below in the description and if you want to support my art a little bit more and give me a bit of extra help. I'd really appreciate it if you check out my Patreon, which I'll put in the description as well. Get access to like a private chat, get access to behind the scenes sketches and content that I don't share with everyone. There's some stuff in these sketchbooks that I've kind of kept a bit more private and on Patreon I've shown those in a bit more detail. And you get early access to a lot more of this stuff and just generally get involved with the creation side of my artwork. If not, if you can't afford to do that, then just follow me on Twitter, keep sharing my art. Sharing is the best thing anyone can do. Stay tuned and thank you so much for watching. Bye.